Okay, we're going to talk about autoregressive models. And for these, they're pretty good for if you have seasonal or regular fluctuation in your, in your time series. Remember, time series are plots of some output against a series of time. We can use regression, but because the inputs are not independent, we can't use all of our uh, regression models, but we can still use it to build up models. Here we're going to look at autoregressive models, uh, which kind of take back what are called lags. Okay, finally I'm gone. Okay, so the simplest typo type model, and we would talk about uh, ARI, MIA models, but we're having to cut out some things here at the end of time. What we do is we use a linear model to predict the value at the present time using the value at the previous time. And this is called AR1 model, standing for the autoaggressive model of order one. The order of the model indicates how many previous times we use to predict the present time. So what we could look at here is, all right, here are the number of earthquakes with magnitude greater than seven on the Richter scale for 100 years. And we could say, well, are the number of earthquakes increasing? You can kind of make your own decisions. Um, in the old days, if we had a lag, we would plot uh, the series. Here's our time, one, two, three, four, five. On this side, we have 13, 14, 8, 10. What we would do is we would just put it down one. So at time two, we'd have 13, 14, 8, 10. And then at six, we'd have 16. So we just sort of copied down and put it down one. Um, so it's a lag time. And so on Minitab, you can do this the long way. I'm not suggesting you do this, but you could copy this and uh, use, I'm, I'm sorry, well, I, I'm suggesting you use this for lag. All right, so here uh, we could have, let's say applications. We just store the lags of lag one. It will put down here. And then I could do it for time three, lag three. So let me just show you how it would, we would do this with this uh, earthquakes. I've already got lag one and lag two here. What I could do is go to stat time series and go down to lag, because I want a lag for a certain period. I want the quakes and I want to store it in column five with the lag of three. So the time will go down by three. And so here I start off with zero spots and I have two, five, 12, eight, and seven from there. And so uh, my lag three then allows, then I could do a regression model on those lags to determine whether or not I like it. So another part is I could do a linear trend plotting them against lags to kind of see like, oh, well, am I, am I going up in comparison to the previous time? So I could just do a time series and do a time series plot of, um, well, actually I want to do a scatter plot. Sorry for that. Let's do a scatter plot of uh, the y variable being lag one and quakes being the x variable. And if I do that, then I kind of get this part and I could actually set in a trend um, if I wanted to, a graph scatter plot with regression. And that would give me some idea of whether the values are going up. And it does appear that those are. So this is the first step for an autoregressive model or AR1 model. There, I guess, here I plotted lag versus quakes. But still, there is a positive correlation between there. And the one of the reasons why we want to do this, if these patterns are present, we want to choose weights to model the patterns. And what we can, that allows us to tell us we can use a weighted moving average to make it smoother, and we can use the lag version of the same series to account for the association of cases with the previous one. And what we have is that the correlation between a series and a lag version of the same series offset by a fixed is called autocorrelation. Again, we're not going to be able to go on this very farther. You don't have any homework on this this year, but these are some of the principles that we have. So you could do the auto correlation function that kind of tells you how these are correlated. So here for this applications, you could see week one has an R correlation of 0.46 and week two and 0.53 and 2.9. And so you kind of get a correlation between the two columns. Um, if you did that here for time series, you can do this autocorrelation and do the uh, 
the quakes. And there's some statistical analysis you could do. And if you plot this, generally, if you see plots above the red lines, it looks like we should weight it with one and three uh, with the autocorrelation. Since we do it one and three, we should probably also include two. And so this kind of gives us an idea of how many moving averages we, we might want to use. So auto regression models is an AR1 model with only the first lag variable, AR2 with the second, and ARN with the first n lag variables. And there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this, um, but we're not going to be able to do as much this year as the analysis part. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is a 2019. Here's a time series plot. I went ahead and plotted the Dow Jones Industrial Average and lagged putting all these legs uh, one through four. And then um, I then fit a regression model based on these legs. Okay. One thing that um, I could then do is here's my Dow Jones Industrial Average leg. Notice that most of it, as it makes sense, depends on the previous term, the 0.91. And so that gives us a lot of part, le the leg two and leg three or, and leg four do not give us as much. And here we can kind of use, we've got to be a little careful because we don't have independence, but we could kind of use the same sort of ideas um, and kind of make some same suggestions. So for example, we might have an AR4 example, the regression on four legs. Here's our expression and predict the next term in the time series. We could plug in what we know now and what was uh, three periods of time to, to predict what the Dow Jones Industrial will be there. Now, Again, we can only do this for maybe one or two periods in advance. Um, and the nice thing is, though, that the AR models can handle seasonal fluctuation by weighting lags corresponding to the fluctuations. And so here are some ideas uh, that we can use. And we will talk about this a little bit later in another video. But the autoregressive models uh, have some component to what we may build up.